than grateful for the opportunity to still share a few works with you. I'm sure some of you are on Parliament Hill on February 12, 2011, the day after Mubarak resigned. A planned global day of protest became a spontaneous celebration as the end of a 30-year state of emergency was finally in sight. I'll pass the rest to Sinti, Dr. Atman. I'll never forget that afternoon's unique rendition of Canaan's song, Waving Flag. The handmade Egyptian flag I was given that day still flies in my office at Amnesty. What's happening in Egypt over three years later is an incredible betrayal of the hope we all felt that day. The news of hundreds more death sentences demonstrates how arbitrary and selective Egypt's criminal justice system has become. The courts are displaying complete contempt for the most basic principles of a fair trial. What else can we make of the fact that verdicts are being delivered by judges who have neither reviewed evidence nor allowed the defense to cross-examine witnesses? And how could they when, how could they, when in some sessions the lawyers and defendants aren't even allowed into the courtroom? Right now, Egypt's judiciary is at risk of becoming just another part of the authorities' repressive machinery. If some of those who continue to anguish in detention without charge, including Khaled al-Qazaz, ever do face trial, what hope is there that anything resembling justice will be forthcoming? Yet that is what the, gov the Canadian government would like us to believe. During his recent trip to Egypt, Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird quietly raised the cases of Mohammed Fahmi and Khalid al-Qazaz with his counterpart in Egypt, something we had been pressing him to do, and of course we're glad to hear. At the same time, however, he insisted that the judicial process in Egypt must be allowed to unfold and that Canada could not interfere. Naming human rights violations for what they are isn't interference. On the contrary, failing to protest the unfolding of an unfair system actually helps enable human rights violations to continue. It's time for Canada to unequivocally speak out and call for an end to Egypt's downward human rights spiral. Thank you.